Yes, good day. Welcome to Moving Forward. Moving Forward is a show where we examine the Trinidad and Tobago music industry. My name is Robin Foster and um, I co-host this uh, program with Mr. Mario Russell. Mario, how are you going? Good, good, good. Robin. All right. So I am an, have a sound engineering background and I've worked on a lot of sessions and, you know, I was around a lot of sessions, a lot, a lot of artists and producers and I pick up a lot along the way. All right. Uh, Mario is one of the you know, foremost DJs over the last um, couple decades. Um, 40 years. 40 years, right, as you say. Um, DJ Mario or Dong Tong Outlaws. And um, he has inspired a lot of DJs to come on the scene. Um, he still DJs um, at functions and stuff, but he is uh, also a music journalist these days, uh, writing in one of the weekly papers on music. And um, he has a lot of ideas on how it could go forward from a DJ point of view. Well, today we're lucky. We have one of the foremost producers and sound engineers um, through the years and musicians, um, Kenny Phillips. Kenny, how are you going? I am great, man. Right. Nice Kenny, um, Kenny has been producing for the last maybe 40 years as well. Mm-hmm. And... Um, in fact, he has sibling, uh, not siblings, offspring that is are now producers in their own right and even doing better than him these days, <laughs> right? So that's, uh, what, that, that's how it's supposed to be. You know? All right, good, 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 yeah, yeah. good. Okay, so we're very glad to have him here, right? So, so Kenny, what we're going to do is we we want to see how to push the music industry forward, but we want to look back at the you know at the past to see what victories we had and what mistakes we made all right so i know you've been around um so um mario you know i like you to start the bowl the first over so you, <laughs> you so you go ahead talk to kenny then all right so kenny is important that we know a little bit about the history so that we can know what was right and um because you have been in the business a very long time and have been able to stay in the business um so you know first of all how you started when you started and when you first built your studio your first record all these questions you know is i mean and, and i'm really interested and, and and want to know more about you on the whole you know i mean we yeah. always hear about you but we don't get to know and understand you a little better you know i mean i, I know you all the years you know but still <laughs> you know I mean? but everybody talk good of you by the way you know so so you're well respected in the business so <clears throat> a little history will be very nice to know uh, um from from whence it came um mm. well hear what i started learning the guitar from stealing my sister's guitar because she was she passed on naprima girls and of course that's a big shot school and i was still in 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 government school and she had a guitar my you know, the guitar was part and parcel of the curriculum so they bought a guitar for her and i was i was um enthralled i was curious about this instrument and she showed me the first few chords this four chord thing and and i find way that nice so when she go to sleep and thing and put the guitar up on the cupboard i used to sneak in the room hmm take up the guitar and go downstairs and strum all kind of thing, you know, not knowing what I'm doing, and then sneak back and put it back. So the next morning, you'll hear, Mommy, something wrong with my guitar. The bridge moved. Somebody interfered with this. Blah, 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 blah. And that will happen regularly until my mother say, you see you? Go and take your own lessons. Go and get your own guitar. You do you. And let me tell you something. My mother was never one to tell me, you know, you should really have a real job. And this music thing will be a hustle, but you have a real job. My mother never tell me that. You is one my of the lucky ones. Said, <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me tell you something. My, when, after learning to play the guitar, after taking the first lesson, I finished the book in the first lesson. Right? Mm-hmm. Me and my guitar tutor became jamming partners. 
he used to like when I come because he and I could sit on and jam. And this, I talk about a big man called Mr. Gaskin. He was a um, a woodworking guy. Um, he used to build cupboards and stuff. And also, he would fix guitars. So he had a lot of guitars. He had them the really big L5 kind of thing that he make himself. He made his own guitars. He was a real he vibes, real vibes, vibes. When the man gets hot, so he turn the guitar upside down and start to beat it while you're playing, all kind of thing. Real vibes. Real, he teach me vibes, and I went, I went pell mell. From first book, I finish everything, everything, everything. As they throw it at me, I finish it. So guitar was mm-hmm. in my future, and my mother saw that, and I'd buy a. a, a he, he gave me, I think he gave me an old guitar, an old green guitar. And I, I and he woke out something where he actually take it out and sand, sand it down and make it a sunburst kind of effect. And, you know, and but it was an old time guitar, right? And I said, well, if I had to get into this industry, I had to get a real guitar. And this guy used to fly in from for every carnival. He still does it up to now. Um, Jimmy Brown. And Jimmy Brown bought a 335 Gibson. And I asked my mother to buy that. And that was real money at the time. In fact, it was my first salary plus some loan. And my mother bought the guitar for me and say, don't let your father see this. Eh? And that was the kind of support I get from Anesta. You want it? Just make sure this is what you really want. And me, you know, next week you're on, on football. And the next week you're on cricket. And the next week you're on tennis. So how, how, old you understand? how old were you at the time? Um, this was the guitar itself. Buying this guitar was about 20, 2021. Mm-hmm. It was early, early, just about leaving school and going into, you know, first job, whose job was in the bank. The first salary from the bank, we take that salary, put it together with our loan and buy this guitar. Because the guitar was expensive because it was at Gibson 335. Yeah. From playing a piece of thing, from playing a piece of thing, to a Gibson 335 that had a tune and a sound. And I, I study all, I study guitar like, like it was, what was the best thing? I was thinking um, Les Paul, I was thinking Stratocaster, I was thinking, and, and then I said 335 because not much people had that. And it had a tone. And I'll tell you something, that tone, that tone of guitar mm-hmm. have me where I am today. How so? Um, I, mean, I know like um, Nile Rogers have a guitar. He just say he, what he just called the hit maker. You know what I mean? Right. So, something like that. that. Santana one exa- too. Exactly <laughs> like that. Yeah. The tone, we told, the tone was just yours. Mm-hmm. Nobody else, nobody else had it. And and funny that you say Nile Rogers. Nile Rogers and I reach for effect in Samash at the same time. I reach for the effect. And mm-hmm. uh, next man reach for the effect. And when I look up, it's Nile Rogers. <laughs> and he said, Cool, he said, Cool man, you, you go ahead. And that is the effect. That is the effect that on feeling it. Uh-huh. You understand? Feeling it by it Baron. A, yeah, it was a the opening lick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole guitar track is the opening. Like, all right, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. I never know if you play guitar on that, but uh, yeah, well, we didn't know that. I, know, I thought mm. that would have be a little. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be very That's young. That's about 1983. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you'd be a young fellow. You'd be about 23. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was a, um, it was a tone, a, ha- a harmonizer. It was actually a harmonizer. And it it did something to the sound, ticking it up and the chorus and everything, and made it sound a kind of way. And and he was reaching for it, and I was reaching for it at the same time. Oh, and we had right. conversation and thing, you know. Nile Rogers, eh? <laughs> okay. Life. All right, good man. So, so um, what what brought the um, recording studio that you that you had? Because since I know you, you always know well, can you record in and stuff like. Or oh, you had a band before playing music in a band then went across the recording studio. How it worked? I played in bands. Oh, okay. um, my, my, my dream my dream at the time mm-hmm. was to be a, a band musician, right? Going from gig to gig, touring the world, 
that kind of thing. Any popular and bands? It you started, could, you could call a few. Any popular bands or fans? Yeah, yeah. I started with Walter School of Music. That's where I started in South. Um, I played in the band, but not in the not in the school, but I played in the band. You ever and went on? Went, so, excuse, you ever went on scouting with them? I remember they used to be on scouting, scouting for talent with Holly B. Toad. a lot. They used to be yeah, yeah and dude playing a lo, lo, love team on a on a violin and that kind of thing. Right, Al Slim, Al Slim. No, uh, yeah. I was a, I was like a kind of hired gun. I just come in the band, right? Mm -hmm. um, I never went to the school. I studied. I'm always studied guitar on my own with my teacher, kind of thing. And um, because as I tell you, I wanted to be a gigging musician, right? You, that was you, my dream. Mm -hmm. Were you part of right? the that was my dream. combo era at all in the music? Well, world? nah, nah. Mm -hmm. I, from the mm -hmm. time I start, after Walter School of Music, mm -hmm. I went to majors, B flat majors mm -hmm. with the Batiste brothers. And B then uh, B sharp a, 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 majors. B flat. Is B flat is or B, B sharp? sharp? B sharp majors. <laughs> The majors, right? The majors, the majors. With the brothers, yeah. B sharp right. majors first. I did it, but did it. Right. Then mm -hmm. I went to the majors mm -hmm. on the whole. You have a picture. Right. Yeah, you start, you, you had a fro at that time, by the way. No, no. I, I, I was like Robin. I had a frightened fro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. You know this is mean. called a frightened fro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, big, mm. big fro. Yeah. Yeah. We played. We played in that band for about three years, and then I'm from majors. I went to Chandelier. Mm -hmm. And from from Chandelier for three years or more, I went to when Chandelier changed over from Chandelier with his S to Chandelier with his C. That was when we left and went to Carl. I went with Carl and Carl Jacobs. All right. And after okay. and after that, after that, any other band would have been my own band gigging in, in jazz festivals and whatnot and whatnot. But but did you do any recording with Carl on on his releases? At of all? course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like songs like... Um, mm -hmm. Jump Be Beat. Mm -hmm. um, from Now On. From Now On was in Barbados. I played guitar on From Now On. Um, mm -hmm. I did drums and programming and stuff for um, Sharky. What's Sharky's name again? Robin? Uh, I met a little girl there. Yeah, um, do, 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 they call me Sharky. Yeah. Ben Dong and Rock. Yeah, Ben, ben Dong yeah, and ben Rock. Dung rock. Yeah, it, have, it have some real nice drumming in Ben Dong and Rock coming down about two thirds inside the song. You hear that yeah. kind of congos like, right? Yeah. And every time I hear that, I say, well, why didn't they bring out these congos in the mix early, you know? Um, it really, really hot. Was it? Was you doing that, by the way? <clears throat> I, I, I already can't remember that specific, right, but, but you know, but Ka, Kali, it depends on Bendong and Rock, right? Um, Ben Rock had more than one version to it. Okay, I think they went, they did it over in um Ice Records with Eddie, Eddie Grant, did it over. <laughs> um, I did a lot, a lot of recordings with Carl, lot, a okay. lot, <laughs> All right? Um, in between Carl and Carol, Kali of himself was, was like. To me, Carly was like the the, the um, Maurice White of Soka. And he's approach he's approach his music like Earthwind and Fire, like Maurice White. Yeah, he was trying to so move I forward. Always, yeah, he was yeah. he was yeah. always he always pushing the envelope. Always, yeah. even to today, when whatever you do, he pushing the envelope. Which is, you know, which is hard in Trinidad. Because we are um, Trinidad is a, a country of wagoners, band wagoners. Everybody, if that's what working, everybody had to do that. Until somebody come and do something different, they say, but, "Hey, hey mm -hmm. can I do that?" Or they going going to everybody doing that, and that's how that's how we are. But hey, all right. So when you build your first studio, um, the studio was originally a demo studio, first in my mother's sewing room in Philippines, and we were doing demos. The first demo I ever did was Burn L C. <laughs> remember Burn L C? What do you mean if I remember Burn L C? Yeah. The, right. cassette, the cassette man. That, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, if Burn L C if Burn L C was in charge of music promotion in Trinidad, we'd have be on the charts a long time because he don't stop. <laughs> He's yeah. a promoter. Yeah. No, no, but in the deceased Burn L C was my, my real horse. Wow. Mm -hmm. And from um doing demos and demos and demos, we find we found that the demos are sounding good. The most started song real good, you know. We started to feel like we're doing something. But really and truly, in our little way, we found the equipment was changing. This was a changeover from when equipment was expensive, expensive, 
mm-hmm. big, big board and all kind of thing, to now getting smaller, getting more affordable, you know, and then boom, Madonna decided to do get into the groove from Inchi Basement and it sell millions. Mm-hmm. And I read that. I read that. So, but if she could do that with me, eh, and I started to look at now, um, started to look at, hey, if she could do it, we could do it too. And that was it. We started to get to, to, to produce more like if it's going to be a finished product. Um, we started to work with guys on Point 14 and thing, the preachers, the Iwas, the whatnot, the whatnot, until um, Iwa, who is the ultimate hustler, <laughs> said to me, Kenny, yeah, if we could reduce this boy. And the actual song wasn't the Bum Bum Time, eh? Mm-hmm. Was Time Hard Hold Tight. If you're mm-hmm. selling cigarettes, yeah, the wrong's about. the wrong's about, right, yeah. Remember you that. understand? And that was, the, that was the actual side A. And the next song was, hey, let me jam down something. Yeah? We, we, we do a jam on the flip side. And that was the first song released from my home studio. And let me tell you this. I was out of my depth. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was doing music, right? I was doing music. I say, this need to have horns. I buy an Ensonic keyboard because the Ensonic had a decent brass tone. Mm-hmm. That was my brass. I needed drums. I had a, um, what, what was it? It was a Korg. It was either a Korg. Well, I had every drum machine. I had Korg, Lin, Boss, all so, kind of drum wait, machines. wait, wait. Boom Boom Time have no real horns on it at all? No, sir. Okay, all right. Yeah, and Sonic. That was, okay. we, we could not afford horns in them days. But the, this was the idea. This is the idea. Hey, we we couldn't go in KH or Coral, whatever they was calling this at the time, and pay for that. We was little scrunter some salt. And um, we do everything. In fact, the bass man on Boom Boom Time was, wasn't punky, was nearly luck. Neil Neil Lux Lilac. That was my right. bass man at the okay. time. Right. You understand? That's before he went away. Yeah, long before he went away. Okay. He was hustling down here, you know. Mm-hmm. So and, and I was out of my depth and I say, look, you see this? Um we're going on, we're going to release this thing. Cool. But if we're going to release this thing, we need to really need to really do put the best foot forward. So I call up. The, 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 the grail, the, the, the holy grail of engineers, Mr. Frank Agarth. I said, Frank, pressure boy. I know what I'm doing. And Frank is the kind of man, Frank will work on a SSL board today yeah. and work on a on a on a four track a minute yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the expression, the expression doesn't change. Right. That's and he'd be correct. like, oh, hmm, okay. All right. <laughs> hmm, hmm, all right. Let me go. <laughs> And that's Frank. You down, the road, down the road. Down the road. Yes, down the road. And mm-hmm. let me tell you something. Frank showed me some kind of things. Things that my son showed me now. <laughs> my son is a is a is a, a techno guru now, my big son. Mm-hmm. And things he's showing me now, Frank was doing back then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, <laughs> I sit down with I'm, Frank already and see him strip things down to little chips and put it back up and <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, crazy I'm guy. telling you. So so I yeah. I, I, I reach I reach in a studio session in Barbados already flying from Trinidad, going to do a session there. I think it was um square one of them in St. Philip in Barbados. And when I walk in the studio, the whole board scrapped down. Mm-hmm. A 72 channel SSL board scrapped down in parts around Frank and he's still on the ground doing whatever. So I say, well, well, session off then. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, give me an hour. Give me an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Come back in. Go and eat lunch. Come back in an hour. And let me, when I reach back, man, testing the tape. He aligning the tape. So we're ready to go. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. That is the level of man. That is the level of man it's have in Trinidad that, that we don't make use of. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I just have a little but thing. Hey, Concerning the is. studio. You know, because DJs would like to know this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, cause we used to use four track at the days and, um, you used to use, do you, did you used to do editing with, um, the reel to reel and cutting and slicing tape and stuff like that? Because you used to do yes, that. Sir. How often you used to do that? Not very, very mm-hmm. often. Mm-hmm. The editing, editing would come at the end 
Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. At the mm-hmm. end. In fact, the um in the earlies there, I do boom boom time on a Commodore 64. Mm-hmm. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Commodore 64. And it had a, 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 a slotted thing called a music data, something sync, something. <laughs> and that is what the drum the drums was off on a different machine. And you know, it was a whole <laughs> it was a whole piece of maths. Yeah, you had to put and it you together. To know how, you had to know how to bounce your tunes, how to bounce the track. It was an eight-track tape, <laughs> eight-track tape, one channel would sync, which would push the sequencer that would play the drums, the keyboards, the horns, right, um, percussion. But on the tape would have voice, background vocals, guitar, bass, if you have bass that you're playing live, Voice, what kind of course, guitar, and any other thing you want, like Tom Rolls or whatever you want to play on the final track. But the track that next to the sync, you have to treat that real nice because you can't put nothing too loud, else you throw off your whole sync. So you have to think, you have to sit down and do maths before. So, so that was a different think. kind of art then, that oh, type yeah. of editing. Yeah, that <laughs> editing is one kind of editing. Then the edit, when you're done now, you'll yeah. mix down the song in parts and you say, all right. This is verse, you cut, you have a block, you cut the verse, you slice it. These are verse on our chorus here, you have to have a rhythm break, you slice. You know, them, slicing was interesting back in those days. Yeah. It was a lot of hard work. Now yeah. this thing, you just see now, a scissors appear and you have a thing called undo. Yeah, but, funny, undo. Yeah, but funny enough, when the, when the computer came, right? Yeah. I knew how to edit because I used to edit the tape. I know was take this, cut here, move this. A lot of younger fellas used to be lost and you had to yeah, show them, well, you lost. know, who could operate the computer better than me? But the, 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 the principle of editing, I mean, I had it done, you know. Uh, yeah, right, the but... Princip- and, and the principle of music is another thing too. All right, yeah. okay, well, yeah. Um, no, all right, that is a good place to start. Um, all right, so when you say doing Iowa boom boom time and that thing, that is what I started to call the new soca. Right, which is that was the beginning of the era of like where we kind of reached to now. Where mm. um, you gain away from <laughs> the Calypsonian and you head into right. the big, well, yeah. right? Well, to the I was kind of uh, um, to me when I came in, it soca was fast Calypso, right? right? Mm-hmm. They had Kaiso and they had soca, which was a fast Calypso. And the first Calypso had a snare. Kaiso didn't have no snare. Kaiso was... That was Kaiso. Mm-hmm. So for, 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 for the Kaiso now to get into the clubs in America, they found that they were missing the snare and the bass lines and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And that was short. Shorty was looking for that. And he started bringing in... He mixed it with the chutney. He looked at the, the chutney dolak. And that was the bass, doo doo, doo doo, that kind of. Mm-hmm. That, and that's what they still call it a soca bass, right? And and he started mixing it to get into the clubs. That was the whole purpose of that mixing it was to get into the clubs, mm-hmm. right? And and it, and it worked, it worked, it worked, right? So I came in at that time where soca was fast calypso. To me, for my and I was young then, it wasn't fast enough. It was pushing. It was pushing 115 to 120. Mm-hmm. And and we had beat at that time was 140. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So so it really was the beginning of the end because right now them hard beat is 170. Okay. Yeah, I was around when I saw here them blaming you for speeding up the thing too. I, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I speed up the thing every um I started some from Iowa, we started speeding up mm-hmm. and putting and and my thing was changing the structure as well, having chants, having you know like the the the, the time had hold tight was the first raga soka. Right. Okay. All you right. understand? No, yeah. it's an important so, thing you say about raga soka because Mario, like, is of the you know kind of the opinion that we should have we should have gone more the kind of house. And dance way instead of going to the um 
to lean in towards that reggae dance hall kind of thing. So he was thinking that maybe in the in the clubs and stuff in Europe, we might have a chance to get a more international breakthrough. Yeah, Mario? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the first thing is in the mixing of the music in Calypso had so many different things in it, but it had some real strong elements that people would like in a club that never used to really come out in the mix. You know, so um, if I felt that um, one is the mixing of the music, which was Calypso is mixed totally different to how um, the Americans would hear it or, the, or, or a club would hear it then, because a club would hear a particular tune and it would be banging loud, you know, just like your guitar with feeling it. You know, just mm -hmm. put, I remember putting on, you just have to put on feeling it and you just hear the beat, dun, 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 and, and that's all it needed, right? It didn't need so many different instruments behind it. Just one little tune could do the thing real good. Um, then if it was more of a dance-oriented way, it could be in the same, I mean, we're talking about ma making music for a foreign market, right? And if somebody's songs, it, it could have been the same Calypso, but if it had, uh, they had songs mixed in a more dance-oriented way, I figured that we could have moved forward in the more European clubs and whatnot because dance music is very popular up to this day. After, since Boom Boom time to now, it still has maintained itself. You know, instead of heading down the more slower pace, R&B, hip-hop type of style. You know, that's how I feel. No, I, I, um, I, I agree with you, you know. <laughs> I totally agree with you. But, yeah, I remember too, at that point in time, everybody looking for that quick hit. And nobody was looking for a DJ to say, come and sit down with me and do this. Very rare. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. rare. People used to... Marshall was one who used to link up with DJs because he was a DJ to some degree. Mm -hmm. You remember? Mm -hmm. um, I used to have um, Kent House yeah, Kent. around with me at one time too. And so I you know, used to do some remixes and stuff. But um, I, would, I would agree with you that DJ, DJism mm -hmm. should have been a part and parcel of production. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Should have been. I think we hear it, different. know, we hear it differently. To how a musician or a local musician may hear, you know. No, I, I, I totally agree because right now, mm -hmm. from being on the radio, from yeah. being on the radio, I hear music differently from the reaction of people to when you play a song. Mm -hmm. You is a totally different thing. Back in the day, I do not tune and hey, this is how I feel it and this is how it is. It's a kind of mm -hmm. ego and bravado. This is it. I, I is the, I is the supreme. Yeah, how but you go tell her artist that, changes that's right. and changes so it ain't, you know. Oh, that's but no, no, I, I used to get in trouble. I used to get in trouble with that. <laughs> yeah. Lots of, lots of trouble with that. Now, at one time, remember, you had problems with the radio not playing the music at, um, at one time. Did that cause you to have your own radio station as one of the... You know, you weren't satisfied with what we're getting from the local radio stations and move, making the music go forward. So I had to stick with the team and moving forward. Um, All right. So um, don't, don't be too I, harsh on them, man. Just be normal. <laughs> me, no, man. I, I, just call it, I just call it as I see it. Yeah. Um, Robin was there, too, back in the day. Yeah. I, re I remember yeah. specifically one time doing a song with Kess. Mother, all right. Kess mother was a singer, a contemporary singer. Her father was a, a Jew. Yeah, his father, Bunny Differentala, was a Juve old champion. Old man. He was an old mass man. Too. Old the mass, best old mass, old mass man. champion. He mm. win old mass a million times. He's a real culture. He's a real cultural aficionado, right? But his mother sang, and she came here and did a contemporary song one of those to dream the impossible something like that right mm -hmm. and i am recording this woman i said wow she's singing real good boy. wow where have you been you know and then it dawned on me hey where are we gonna play this who going to play this you understand what i'm saying yeah and i said there is no place to play this music. So here we are throwing away our talent because we don't have 
uh, our thing organized where you can play this kind of music. And mind you, if somebody from America sing the same song, mm -hmm. they would play it. Yeah. So, and I found that that was the trigger. I said, but nah, we have to do something about this. And I was the, I was a director on Riot, and then I became the acting president of Riot. <laughs> You're smiling, Robin. Um, and it was through Riot, we decided we need to march and make our voices heard as for 50% local content. And, and, and boss man, mm -hmm. the problem then, we, were, uh, we had less than 4% percentage of airplay, local airplay in Trinidad and Tobago. Right? And that was 2000, Robin? About 1990-something mm. to 2000? Yeah, 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 yeah. Late 90s, yeah. Right. And let mm -hmm. me tell you something. Being on the board of directors of CUT, mm -hmm. it was the same percentage. And let me tell you this. My son is on the board of directors of CUT, and it's still the same thing. So nothing had changed. Mm -mm. Nothing had changed. You mean nothing but, had changed to this present time? Nothing had changed, and right. we are doing we are doing nothing to change nothing, unless you do something on your own, which I decide. Look, you see me, I doing something to change, and I I do what I doing. All right. So, what do you think is the one of the main reasons why we um you know why we are so called make it that kind of way? What is it? Something. What we're trying to ascertain, is it something inherent in the production of the music or is it a more marketing thing? Yes and yes, both. Mm -hmm. um, one, coming through the, coming through the ages, the, the production, we, we producing, we were producing, we had big studios like Coral, Shark, then to the Amars, and those big studios that nobody could have really afford unless you go to a big producer, a big um, executive producer, and you had to have a big name to do that. Cool? Mm -hmm. So, right, that's one. But the average man who have real talent ain't have the money to get to that point. Cool? So, the home studios now will make do with what they have. Right? I could tell you, coming through to the beginning of things there, we were scrunting, we were scrunting one keyboard, one mixing board, what you know, eight track tape, and you had to try and you trying to to fool people to make you feel like you have a big song, you know. My my thing is, I know it it wasn't big song, but it was big heart, and the vibes used to come out on the record, you understand? But if if really and truly to make it, you gotta take that into a real studio abroad and mix it for it to be as fat as everything else. Right? You remember the uh, we did a, a, a seminar with Dexter Simmons as in why do they song like that and why we do song like this? Right. And and it was it was eye opening because it was what he was doing there showed us that hey, we don't really know what's going on there, you know. We don't we don't use the techniques, we don't you know. But right, but I, I have to say that from from dance to now we have learned a lot and the industry songs right now. The music, technically, songs international. Technically, songs international. Production, um, feel and heart-wise, is plastic. But that is just me. Right. Um, that is the that point I was always making. It, um, it can have the honesty. Right? Which, right. It's which, just, which, which, it's which, a hustle. Which would make it's it reach hustle. people. It's just a hustle. Well, that's what, yeah. that's what it is. Now, we have what our industry basically was we were f um what is the word we were fac facilitating um the international trinidad type carnival industry right and um you know and some people did it well and some people became millionaires off of doing it right um and and that is what the focus was like we were discussing we had david rather on and we were discussing like um both himself and um marshall had international deals and um somehow the companies found that they never got the the so the song that they wanted right and i asked david if it were that um uh if they 
you know, were comfortable as the big fish in the small pond. And, and instead of trying to become a small fish in a big pond, right? So um, he was... He was saying that he tried, um, he was thinking it's just a marketing thing. Everything that the record company made mistakes and, and, and thing, right? I mean, Marshall had even a bigger company behind him, a um, big international company. that, And he flew working with producers all over the place, you know. Um, he took a year off from service in the carnivals, um, you know, but. Um, I don't know what you think is the why you think we uh, make the final jump um, this might be this might be controversial here go, go through hard with controversial you yeah, know I me afraid okay. um, I think we are making we are across the hurdle because everybody who come to take us across the hurdle of of local to international, wants to change our clothes, change the uniform, change the shoes, change the hairstyle, change the belt, change everything, and just take us over the hurdle. But if you like me like this, and you find out good, sell me so. You understand? But they, they, everybody they try to get to that point, they want to change you to suit America. How come they didn't change Bob Marley to suit anything. Well, he didn't make it in he didn't make it in America at, at the beginning, eh? He took him out. Right, okay. Yeah. But he but he made it he made it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he made it so he made it somewhere. Right? So what I'm saying what I'm saying is we have to now we have to now um we have to now understand that this is what this is who we are and believe in who we are. You understand? And we, we, we never had we have um we never had that company believing in you gotta believe in our Marshall. I am sure they'll be they'll believe in Marshall now. As to the when they were signing him, they were trying to make him an R and B singer. Yeah, well, you he, understand? He, he seemed to be settling into the mm -hmm. he, like he do, he not studying that, he just studying this market. You here. see, I think it. I think that is one of the mistakes in true, you know, Kenny, is that we, too much of us had a focus on recording for the international market and all them kind of thing, right? And, yeah, yeah. And the music just didn't sound honest because it was a hustle. You understand what I mean? Um, and I think we could have, um, I think we should just try to make good music for ourselves. And when we make, when we do that, um, you know, somebody once the music good, somebody will come for it, right? I mean, and yeah. get the right, get the right um, marketing in place, right? You know, last week we had this whole thing about the 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 juve 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 rum, right? And all of we jump up and make a, a, a set of noise about it, but we even taste the rum. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Hey, Trini. No, but the, but the, thing, the thing about it, Trini, all the Trinis who beaten them, beaten them out on, on the thing, right? All the Trinis that beaten them out on the thing are not true soldiers in the culture. You understand? They only like Trinidad when it's carnival time. They like Trinidad when, when, when um, Trinidad playing and winning, when West Indies playing and winning. You know, fear with that friends. You gotta be a Trinidadian, true thick and thin. Don't care what's going on as a true Trini. There are not a lot of non non Trinis, you know, who really are more American than Puerto Rico and Hawaii. You understand? And yeah. they, they jump in, they bump in the gum. I put they up bump a, in the gum. I put up a, a, a post on Facebook saying that if I came up with a rum at any drink and I call it Juve. Trinis will tell me, no, no, no. See, that that too local. You ain't going to reach the international market with that. You got to put, you got to yeah. name it something that the outside people are accustomed to and all them kinds of things. <laughs> so, you know, we don't, we don't, yeah, we, don't, we, we don't see ourselves as, we don't see the worth in ourselves, you know. It's only when somebody do something, somebody um, jump, invent some kind of pan somewhere or patent something, 
nice we think nice we think but we don't do the work we we not willing to do the work you know i mean to um you know i saw quarrel with that you know um some when they was doing the steel ban thing in in france for for bastille day with jean michel jean the engineers and thing came here from months before and work it out and stuff you know but we don't do that in trinidad you know, yeah, that is that is you know, true. Though. We don't do that. You know, that that has no, always the, the been my ma- beef. The majority of us don't. The majority of us don't. To tell you the honest truth, because right now, right now, I'm working on something that kind of mind blowing, and I had to actually do two to three months of work before I get to the point of launching it out. You understand? And that that is well, that is me. That's what I used to do. You understand? I'd be inside working it out. To, to, to have a studio, to build a small studio, you had to sit down and study and work out things in your head for months to figure out where you're going, what you're doing. You know, and, and when you're pushing the envelope, you had to really be, be thinking that kind of way. We, we, we just, just things that just happen. You know, we, you know the word you were chosen to that is in spite of. Yeah. You understand? Um, things that happen in spite of. Now, Kenny, I... I... Well, when I go away and I go in my partner's house, I follow like Mike Sears. I don't know if you know him, but anyway. I know, um, I know him very well. Right. I know him very, very well. Like he yeah. just have work. I just hear more work than I just hear. I just hear work from him running. And, and when I go in his friend's place, they'd be running work right through the house, round the clock. You know what I mean? So it means that mm-hmm. for when it comes to the Caribbean market, you're really touching a lot of the outside influence more than any other radio station I think at present because I mean I hear it I hear hear work all over on the international scene plane. Um so it means you have an important role as regards to pushing the music. So as regards the radio format. And what sort of radio format you choose to play on the radio stations? I mean I asked that question whether you choose to play the everything, whether you choose to play I know that you, you push Calypso, which is important. Mm-hmm. Or when you choose like some stations just to put Soka and do push Calypso. So it's interesting to know um, where you're heading as regards to that scene that you have the market for the international lis- listeners. Um, mm-hmm. well, well, the market mm-hmm. is driven by mm-hmm. my demographic, mm-hmm. right? My demographic is our age group, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry, fellas, if I thought I was young. Mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah, yeah. okay. But, uh, my, my demographic is <laughs> forty oh. and up, right? That is where you're forty up. and up, right? That's the way I'm aiming up. That's why I end up. You know, that's where I end up. <laughs> that's why I end up. You know, I ain't thinking no, you end up there. Um, where you choose to push? <laughs> no, a lot of push where I believe in. Right. And if okay. I believe in Kaiso, if I believe in Kaiso, I believe in Soka, mm-hmm. I believe in Trini Pop, I believe in you know Trinbago culture. Mm-hmm. Trinbago culture really tribes from the age group of 40 and up the younger ones the younger ones doing the soca these days would really they're doing that soca and, they, and they're making it but they really would have wished they was r&b singers to tell you the honest truth to tell you the honest <laughs> truth but you but know they, a but, lot they, of, but they live in here but a lot of us a lot of people who are um, in the business maybe even you i think i mm. um a lot of them tell me that they, in the beginning, they didn't really like Calypso and they wanted to do something else, but they end up, you know, doing it, you know. So right, um, but no, when well, that's it, you know, no, you're, you're hitting a point. That's the problem. When we are young, we mm-hmm. influenced by what we hear and what we see, and if we're not seeing ourselves as as worthy, as good enough in the world, we will always watch. We will always watch Earth, Wind, and Fire. Uh, I remember Brothers Johnson. Mm. Brothers Johnson had a guitar riff, a guitar lick in um, Strawberry Letter. Mm. And I play on the same stage with Brothers Johnson, with Majors, and we play that song, (laughs) and I had to play that riff. And the man who supposed to have played the riff come out and watch me and say, man, you're playing it. When them trying to play it, he just, he had a looper, and he just went, one, and it looped itself. (laughs) <laughs> so I realized oh, I didn't know. <laughs> you understand? Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is I'm saying we are good enough, but we don't believe that we're good enough. And that is the country's problem. 
We are not treated as we are good enough. We are treated that we just second rate and the real world is out there and everything out there is better than here. You understand? And well, yeah, well. so the the youngsters now grew up, I grew up thinking that was it. But I also so it grew a, up. There was a time. Mm -hmm. There was a time when it, it my mind changed midstream in, in Walter School of Music. I used mm -hmm. to play the funk. I used, I was the funk man. Right? And and when we get out to the calypso, that another guy who used to play the calypso, but he couldn't play the strums good. So I end up strumming the kaiso. And I said, mm -hmm. do it begrudgingly. Begrudgingly. And eventually, that funk and that kaiso come together and make Kenny Phillips strum. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but I, just wanna, I am one. I, I, there's no bigger funk fan than me. I am a meters and party. I am funk JBs, right? But Ohio I did, players, but right. Express, but you know, I did, average white band. But I did like man? I did like my old Kaiso and thing same way. But I rem, but in we but we but we we, o, we also grew up in our days with Lancelot Lane telling we don't believe what foreigners do is better than you because that ain't true, right? You know. Yeah, so we, yeah. we we grew up with that too. You know, what but, I mean, Robin. Yeah. When was your awakening? Because there's a time, there's a, there's an awakening, there's a, a wool lifting of the eye and you realize, wait, I got trainee boy, I got trainee boy, I yeah, have to, yeah. this is me here boy, so hmm. nobody can tell me, no, nobody can tell me that my accent is good, nobody can tell me I had to go to radio and song like, hey, blah, 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 blah. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I, yeah, yeah. I, Let me get this story about the radio station, let me get this story. I... We put together the radio station. Robin, you was around, you know. Yeah. You, you was around with the name form and all kind of thing. Yeah, remember I said, um, you that why you call it W-A-C-K. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and, you're and when I explain, or, it's just W right. thing, right? But here, was, we call it W was originally wireless something, 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 right? We are culture crazy. <laughs> no, 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 but in the States, it's wireless. Uh, w is wireless. Mm -hmm. So here what? Um, when I started putting the thing together, Sprang along was mm -hmm. on my board. Sprang along, bill all my computers. Right, right. My ex partner, I remember Bonnie. Bonnie had a construction company. Right. He did all the song, yeah. had all the song proofing of the of the roof and thing. Um, the next one was Joel. Joel Edwards. He was the accountant, so he started putting the books together and thing to go and get loan and thing. Right, and of course, I didn't know. I had equipment. I had equipment from studio. And, but I didn't know radio. So I hired a particular gentleman. I wouldn't call his name. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call his name mm -hmm. as the program director. Mm -hmm. And he used to work, he used to work on Radio 100. Mm -hmm. And when we started now, he started programming the radio station and programming, oh, this five minutes we'll play this, and this five minutes we'll play that, and this five minutes we'll play this, and this five minutes. And he had it down to a science. And I one day I say, yo, we sung it like Radio 100, you know. But that's good radio. I said, but that's not how I want to song. So how do you want a song? I said, I want to song like Trinidad and Tobago. It's like how we sit on here talking, we liming, we talking like we. Yeah. I saw I want to song. I want to song like Trinidad. I don't want to be no no pseudo Yankee. I want to be a great Trinidadian and a half a great Yankee. All right? So, kill that. I want that change. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's not good radio. I say, yo, I don't care about what you think. This is what I think. And this is what I want. You understand? The man vexed with me. The man didn't talk to me. After that, I, I, he, he come to work and then talk to me. And I had to pull him. I say, yo, come, let me take a drive. Come. And with choice adjectives, mm -hmm. I said, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This here is on me and my wife mortgage, you know, brother. If this fall apart, you just wipe your mouth and you go on to the next job, you know. This is me here, you know. And mm. it's not going to fail. Yeah, man, so, well, you know, you feel that like I don't have stakes, but I do. Uh, any normal Yankee tone. <laughs> I say, well, here what, number brethren? Here what, man? Uh. This is what I want. This is what I do in. In a few, the man in last, in the last three months, mm -hmm. and he went to another station. Again, you have a big story here. He went to another station, 
that open after us doing total local. Hmm. And they didn't last, and they didn't last three years. All right. Somebody, you took, over, somebody took over the license. Somebody buy them out right. because okay. they weren't making money. Somebody bought them out. And in fact, no. The, the people who you're competing with, the foreign, um, Chinese laundry bought them out. I yeah, no yeah, 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 yeah. And funny enough, you know, that was the, that particular um, station was the station mm -hmm. long before you and before everybody else. That was the station that was supposed to be the local station. You remember that? That was supposed to be... Uh, Boss man. That was, was there. The man who got that license mm -hmm. did me and Iowa application. Right. We did a did but, application. But he had that and in we, for years and years and years and years. Be, no. 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 In fact, he's the no. He it, no. That I wasn't. That him. wasn't. That call letters. That was Radio Superior. No, Radio Superior was ninety four point one. No, that wasn't Radio Superior. That wasn't Radio Superior? No. That was 7.7. When he did our oh, me right, and right. Iowa license, mm -hmm. when he did me and Iowa license, he applied for, that's showing you how God don't sleep. He applied mm -hmm. for community licenses for us. Community. And he applied. And he applied. He did, oh, he applied for oh, all right, all right. And, and I, I, know this, I, know the, I know the guy you're talking about. He did the technical work for you and thing. Right. right. Well, I know him. He was a former colleague of mine. Right. 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 And yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, mm -hmm. in October, in October this year, we will be here 17 years. 17? Wow. wow. So, so yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Um, how were you able to survive these 17 years? Because, you know, people who try and push local, they usually fall. So you had to have something <laughs> yeah. under your belt. They say local can make. You know what I mean? So you had to have something under your belt. Also, mm -hmm. do you think you have more international appeal than, I mean, international Trini audience than um, appeal down here locally then? Um, how would you read yeah. that? Yes. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. um, I, that, and that is, that is my, um, what is the word? That is my Trump card. <laughs> Trump, for yeah. a better description. But um, the... Is who loves the culture. Is who love who love it. Who love it. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Um, the 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 average Trinidadian Trini does not love it. But when you go outside there and you realize you're a little fish in a huge pond, you mm -hmm. walk in the road looking around mm -hmm. for any Trinidad flag on a car, anything, trying <laughs> to find you. yourself. So. We what work has done, what work has done is galvanize the Trinis throughout the world. Um, it used to be done by the um, pirate stations, mm -hmm. but they were too unreliable too unreliable, right? Because you spin a corner and they're gone. You spin the next corner and they come back. You understand? But with this, with work now being wireless on your phone, on your whatever your tablet, whatever, you you are you you're with me anywhere, I'm with you anywhere forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. So it, it 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 has grown and it is continuing to grow. So like like at the beginning of the pandemic, at the beginning of the pandemic, on my YouTube I had eight thousand subscribers. Right now we are about two hundred away from seventeen thousand subscribers, and that is the growth, is mm -hmm. exponential growth. And 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 remember, why seventeen thousand or sixteen thousand seven hundred is so important, is that it is. The demographic that is sixteen thousand is the demographic is forty five to one hundred and five, who online, and subscribing, and listening and watching. When I see my mother watching my thing on YouTube, I like whoa. Is that demographic who had given up and yeah, because something just radio to non radio fusion and and now mm. they you know so that was that's one of my um you know advantages. So, and the, the old people who are still here with us. So know. why do you think you have more listeners outside of Trinidad than in Trinidad? Because of the music that we play. They are more Trini-centric. They want to hear home. They want to feel home. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. so you get, a, man, yeah. a, man, a man was listening in listening the radio station one time and he dancing and enjoying himself and he had to remember he had to go pick up something outside and he'd be a back. And he gone outside and gone outside and the door closed behind him only to realize it's snow outside and he'd be a back. <laughs> he forget where he was. You understand? When he give me that story, we roll. Because walk in the house. Yeah, yeah. Feeling he, 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 he feel the engine and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He gone outside for something. He gone outside for something. Not realizing the way he's making snow on him, boy. <laughs> and lock, lock himself out in the snow. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but our, our people, it's, it, we have galvanized them almost like a, like a, 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 a I don't want to say cult, like a family. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. Where we know, we know them by name. It are people who, who call me like, like like um last not last two years ago, two years ago we had a party in Brooklyn. And I never wanted to go to these parties. I never want to. My sister said, Kenny, you have to come this one. So I go on and let me tell you something. I was in tears and fighting it so much times in that party, you will not believe. Mm -hmm. And mama will come up to me and say, Hey, Kenny boy. Let me tell you something. You really um, you kept me alive because it's work that keep me alive because my wife passed, and it's true. All you and listen to all you and panorama and blah 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 that make me, that pull me through. And next man come and, and hand me, he bring in the party, bring a bass guitar, with case and stand. He say I buy this to practice, but my wife say I can't practice. Hold that, and I do whatever I want with it. I'm like, what is really going on here, boy? I left that party. I left that party, and I don't. I don't. I don't want to lie here. I left that party with four thousand US dollars in my hand, cash. Hmm. People were just coming and handing me money and chucking it in my pocket. Boy, thanks, boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, thank you. And that that expression, the love that I give them, they give back. They give back to me. Okay. Well. All right. So. Um... <laughs> where, where's the way forward moving forward where do you think we should go from here Ken um, one more question um, right. Kenny have you ever been acknowledged by the government um, well I know maybe overseas and stuff like that for your contribution in promoting Calypso abroad and Soka abroad because if people listening to work as the number one station you play in a major role in getting the music out there and bringing it to people so have they locally seen your significance in the market or this they ain't reached that far yet we want me to tell you brother man we <laughs> really want me to tell you we really want me to answer let me tell you something eh? um, yeah. the powers that be <laughs> and it could be what party what government <laughs> only see the value of culture when it's time for somebody to write a song a political song for them for carnival <laughs> no sorry for for, for election <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. that is that is our value to them. Other than that, they're too busy. They're too they're too bothered, right? And and really and truly, Calypso. I have known Calypsos to raise up governments and pull governments down, and they really should have a little more respect. But they don't, and it it, it doesn't matter which party in power. Mm -hmm. Is 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 the same story right through? So you're moving forward so, on your own enthusiasm on your own rhythm you're not yeah. dependent on anybody else and, and whatnot i don't matter i don't matter i do know how to do all right and and you really should be moving forward moving with the forward industry. yeah that is mm -hmm. what we should do. right let me let me tell you what i see as moving forward eh? it's mm -hmm. three four different ways one way of moving forward is the older heads like the lestons the pelhams the kennys the who have i have again who are wrong still leston pelham kenny um, Neil Bernard. <laughs> young guy, he's a young guy. Ah, man, we need uh, um, Eddie Grant. Now your, nah, your boy in South. Um, um, Ibo. 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 Yeah, yeah Junior. Right, but when Ibo and Neil and them is my is my protégés, you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ibo come out of me. Neil come out of here. Like, and my sons and them too. We as the older heads have to start to work with the younger heads so that we could give them what they do have and they could give us what, give us older ones what we do have, right? That's one way, right? And try to mix the music with the rhythm. That's one way. 
Two, we're working, working with the DJs because it's easier now. Because you could send a, a mixer DJ and he could tell you, hey, you see this section here? You can double up this, this section here and do this, that, 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 that. And in fact, most of the DJs now could do it themselves. You understand? Because mm -hmm. most of them working with working with stuff. So we have a song. This is my song, but this is my this is my DJ remix or my club mix or my whatever of the song or road mix or whatever, whatever. Because a lot of heavy road mixes happening now, which gives us a little. I see my sons and I'm doing it. The road mix is a big deal, but we need to we need to probably take it a little more serious. Okay, take it much more serious. And, and um, two, three, they have, have something in mind. There are a lot of things now where, um, and this is, a, this is a new one, eh? Uh, I've been thinking about it. Eh? Um, there are some programs now, it's something that I do as a, as a, as a business pattern thing, where you could pull voices out of mixes. Meaning, um, look, I have to do a show next week and the girl wants to sing um, Johnny King, I Want It. So I will take the want it, want it all the time, run it through this program and extract the vocal so that she could sing live with it. Cool? And it takes out about 98 or 99% of the vocal. What I think we could do is take that same vocal that we take out and build back a whole song on it using the original vocal and whatever parts of the music you want and build it back with new tones, new styles with the original, as much as you want to use, as much as you don't want to, you want to throw it, and build different remixes of the old songs. Because the old songs have, have something that the new songs don't have. So we could now update these songs that, are, that that sitting there doing nothing for a long time now and try and give it a new fresh lease and, and add a youngster with it, a chant man, a singer, or whatever, and do something like that. That's a, I feel that is a way, something we should be able to do, and that could be easy to do too. You wouldn't just do a remake with a new person singing the old song? It will be the same. If you have the original voice, let them sing with the original voice. So that piece of equipment, it taking out the thing so you could sing karaoke, but when you take it out, you could have the vocal separate? Yeah, that's the question. Everything. Vocal, yeah. vocal bass is... is um. It's an isotopish kind of thing. Mm -hmm. no, but well, have it, I've, have it. I've been to AES and see like companies out of Holland and stuff have stuff that could take out a a, a, a siren from passing in the back of the recording and all them things. Eh? They could right. do pretty amazing things. Eh? A lot of them right. things was used for like like the FBI and thing, you know, to for surveillance and all them things. But reaching down to the to the uh, to the consumer now, you know. Yeah. So I am thinking of that is one way. Like I, I even have a, um, and I even have, this is just my vanity project. Some of the tracks that I've done from way back when, um, put them onto digital and do them over. And now, All right. with do different you, research. Oh, oh, your um, sons and them do it? <laughs> I can't get them to do nothing. They're too expensive. They're too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. I just had to be borrowing stuff from my son now, you know? You just yeah. be borrowing your own stuff. You ever catch yourself borrowing your own stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that has happened too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, like, you know. So, That's a hell of a thing, eh? Yeah, boy. Yeah, so, oh, you said that's how it is go? I see. Yeah, um, so, so yeah, what do you think is like the advantage of your son, like KC? Having a, a studio in LA, you think that could do anything at all for the music? Um, yeah. Um, he now has a, 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 a direct line. He now has a direct line into uh, the American market, right? Mm -hmm. I see. He just released something with um with what them guys name the guy who does write for um who's write for everybody. Britney Spears and all that kind of thing. Um, what's his name? Um, 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 Tehran. He came down and did the, the, the seminar with Casey here mm -hmm. uh, from Rock, Rock City. Mario, you might know him. Rock City. Mm -hmm. He's a, a big-time writer. He writes for everybody. Right? 
And um, he was on Casey's, he was on Casey's seminar at UTT. Because, you know, Precision Production is a teaching institute now, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and he have a lot of followers, he have over 10,000 followers and wherever. And he, he teaches, he teaches audio stuff. So he has a direct link into the, the foreign market. So they could actually now get something there quicker. You know what I'm saying? I see it happen yet, but I, I guess it should be easy to, to happen. You know? But he yeah. working with he's worked with everybody, so Yeah, well he know. was telling me that um when he was when he was working in Trinidad he would write to all his companies in LA and stuff and they would um they would mm, even write him back. But when he be, when he started to w- live in LA and he would walk into these companies and say, well, he is Kai, um, Casey Phillips from um, Precision Production. He said, yeah, they would tell him, like, hold this, hold that, you know. Like, you know, just being out there is, um, you know. So Yeah, but he, he ain't about parrot on a stick, so he could go anywhere. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, um, no, no, long ago, like, if you had to make it in the, in the, any kind of, business you'd have to move to New York or, or LA or something, right? But now the internet is supposed to be like a kind of leveler, you know, that that um you know that you could stay and work from anywhere in the world, right? But look like there's st- there's still some advantage of physically being there. Yep, 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 yep. Definitely. Ah, it's easier. Yeah. It's easier. But um but I would still say he still has had a fly down here for the carnival fix <laughs> and could fly back up. <laughs> and fly so, back you know. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? But what? um, but then again, they have another one in the house. So when that one goes and have a next one, he'll make trouble the same way. Wow. Okay. You know? Yeah. You, ha- you, have it, you have it multi-layered? <laughs> multi-layered, boy. Uh-huh. You know, like, at a, at a, at, it's so weird for me to have to book time in my own studio. Well, that good. Huh? You know? Hmm. That ain't good. I have custom going down in the studio, bare back in my drawers, doing whatever I want. Uh-huh. You know, I bust the door in my drawers and realize people in the studio. I I'm like, whoa. whoa. And, you know, I custom. Hmm. It's, it's my studio, but it's not my studio anymore. So it is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's, just mm-hmm. a good, it's a good problem to have, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Mario, um, right, so we're going over the hour. Um, <laughs> right, well, well um, um, Kenny. Um, mm-hmm. Talk to Kenny, then. Yeah, that song last year called Walk Them, Kenny. How, how did that do? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, in all fairness... I was expecting it to play a little more for Carnival, eh? you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was so cool. If you, if you, if you saying that, then I thank you for, you know, for saying no, that. No, and yeah. in um, fact, I was, I thought you, I honestly <laughs> thought you would have made the Savannah. Honestly <laughs> thought so. Honestly thought so, but I ain't know what happened. No, but who is... Who is you to just jump in the people car? So I just make it all the way. But you use, so use, ke, use Kenny Phillips. But you know no Calypsonian? <laughs> you gotta understand the you gotta understand the um I understand the, poli- the politics, the politics. When David Rather you know sing I mean? in the in the for the crown, they say he's not no Calypsonian either. He's a band singer. You know, right. I mean, he, he will yeah. come last and all them kind of thing, you know. Let me tell you something. I bet some men, I was so cocky, I bet some big time Calypsonians like contender and them. Um, I say, I, I continue ask, you know, I continue ask, you know, in jest, of course, I continue mm-hmm. ask, you know, and it's up to yesterday, I was on an interview, and he, he sent a message, remember, I cut your ass, <laughs> <laughs> because in all fairness, I came, I came 50 out of the 700 Calypsonians, what? I really thought, I really thought I would have made it to these, uh, my dream was to go semi-finals, mm-hmm. that was my, that was the day, mm-hmm. whatever happened after that happened, but, you know, it didn't happen, you know, they picked 40 and I, I came 50 at, you know. But I had I had a good time. I went in Young Kings. I came 15 Young Kings. I beat big men like Swappy and, and Pretty and them. But it was fun. I, I wasn't, this was no planting. A man bring the song. Kurt Allen bring the song. I said, hey, I have a song for you. I say, you're a mad man. Song for me. He said, nah, once you sing this song, that's it. It's gone clear. And the rest is to... <laughs> Um, this is real history, um, but it was fun. I just I do mm-hmm. I do the music and you know. A quick question: um, How was the live performances working out? I mean, last year with the lockdown and this year to some extent, but last year a lot we were seeing it. 
we could always look forward to the performances and how was it is it profitable i mean i don't want it to reveal anything i'm not trying to be too personal but is it working out that you could see if it working out because you know you know the situation with artists and not being able to perform so we all know the situation with that how it is and um you offer a kind of gateway for these artists to perform make a little and, dollar. yeah make a little make dollar, dollar but i mean it was a is a is a chancy thing eh? um i look at it because it's yeah. going on donation and it means that people might not get paid if they ain't get enough donation and whatnot. So how is that working out on the whole? Well, for the, whole, for the whole year, for the year, <laughs> for the year gone, it was very, very good. <laughs> um, of late, I've been, hit, I've been hit some blows because um, the Prime Minister doing what he had to do mm -hmm. and throwing removing a few times willy-nilly. So sometimes I will have a show, I have a show at, at six or seven, mm -hmm. the curfew is nine, or sometimes the curfew is even five o'clock, all kind of thing. All, so the curfew is seven o'clock, and I have, you know, so I, I'll be bobbing and weaving, and, you know. So that is, that affected me in a big way right now. Um, I'm doing midday shows now, you know, but in all, honestly, from, for the 15 months, for the 15 months from April 20, whenever the way, 15 months ago, mm -hmm. um, when the show first show was really Terry Lyons, um, the monarch. Um, we have done, we've did over what is called it over six figures. Mm. Six, six figures, they say. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we have done pretty all right, and we split the money 50 50 with the artists. You know, so we we've done all right. We just have to wait to where where the next thing is and well, how I have to I have to keep reinventing new shows and stuff all the time. But who is who is giving the money? The foreign market or the local people? Who is who's ninety five ninety five percent is the foreign market. Oh, um wow. because as again mm -hmm. the local market does not understand. For example, and I've seen it bold, I had to struggle to get a, a platform in Trinidad where locals could contribute. I right. got the platform after begging, scratching, cajoling, you know, harassing. Mm -hmm. I got B-Mobile to give me a platform, right? And that happened in September. That's after we've been running since March, April. So the five, we got we got a platform where you could text a five dollars, text a ten dollars, text a, a, a twenty, a fifty, from your phone, cool. Mm -hmm. And I say right, at least somebody in Trinidad could do something. I like that we're going there. Hold a twenty, you know, and you could get twenty from anybody who who like it, you know. Brother man, at Carnival time, Carnival time, hmm. the month of Carnival, I get a message from B Mobile. They're shutting down the, 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 the service. Why was say, that? Well, right. One, it is not their core business. Right? Um, it's not, this is not what, they don't have no staff to do that. Two, um, they, they, they cash trapped. So sometimes my money end up in a grab where they, they can't pay at the time. That kind of thing. Because it, it, they we ran for about ran for about six to seven months with them, we would have gathered at least fifty no forty six to forty seven thousand dollars in that time from donations, of which I couldn't get, so they shut down the thing and I couldn't get the money too. So, so all the people uh, who uh, donate to I that. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. So what you're saying is the people mm -hmm. who donate to. Uh, artists or something the artist just wouldn't get the money no no i pay the artist no but what i'm saying Remember? is the, the person if 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 i donate 20 dollars to terry lyons i want my money to go to terry lyons productions if b mobile or whoever am paid what does that mean that they have kept the money or did they give it back or or what me and meddle with them if I have a 
a listing saying $20 from Robin Foster goes to Terry Lyons. I am paying Terry Lyons at $20. When I get the money from B-Mobile, then we reconcile that. But what I'm saying is I ain't get it, but I paid right. Terry Lyons. So, but no, but think of it from, from Robin Foster who donate the $20. I don't want my money to end up in a pool in B-Mobile. I want it to go to Terry Lyons. So if if you're, if, you're if not listening. I understand, you're listening. okay, let me. Yeah, listen. Mm -hmm. Robin Foster's donation mm -hmm. went to Terry Lyons. It okay. was paid by me. I am it back from them. I understand that. Yes, but what I'm saying. We say the same thing. Yeah, no, no, no. But what I'm saying is, um, my money then it should it should be it should be if it didn't go to where i wanted it to go it should have been given but it back did. to me no it did because you paid but what i'm saying is the money that was that was collected right which you never got to pay right but i will the issue is while i pay it is because i will get it you will get it oh is well it? all right okay right. well now nah, that's that's yeah. that, that's better if if i if I wasn't getting it, you would have hear my mouth on the on, on the All TV right, and okay, on okay, papers. Okay. So, so, okay. You know? so, so I know you're strong. So so what is the plan if that fall through? What, what was the next plan you had then for Carnival? Seeing that um, by that come out of the loop. I tried I tried mm -hmm. a thing called N Cash, mm -hmm. which is a it didn't it didn't it didn't catch one at all. Mm -hmm. Is that it's a Republic Bank thing where you put money on, on your, your phone becomes your wallet. And you put money on your phone, and you, it, but it's too complicated for my people. It needs to be something simpler. Um, other than that, I may have to go to the powers that be and say talk to talk to TSCT. Okay, so um, all right. What if we come up with our own, how to put it, a portal where we could promote our music, collect cash, do everything? You yeah, think something like that would 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 Peter or benefit? I have that too, and it. it um, remember, I, I did Panorama through a portal called Tizik.com. Mm -hmm. um, it works. You could you could do you could do um, pay per view. You could do donation. You could do everything. Um, but you have to remember the people who pay in. Even though they are they they they're willing to pay, they still we still have to keep in mind the age. We still have to keep in mind the age, right? Mm -hmm. And you can't you can't make it too difficult for them. And oh, some of these right. things are a little too little too um too technical too, too um too, it should be simple. Sending a text is simple, and even that was a little tr problematic to some oh, people. Boy, hmm. you know what <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah. I have some uncle and things I had to show them that a million times. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, so, you have, so whatever you're going. doing, whatever you're doing, it had to be, it had to be simple enough to say, clicks, 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 bam. So you, you understand? You plan to have more of these shows coming up soon? Or, or you're giving it to yeah. yeah, I had a show today. I find the momentum, <laughs> the mo I know you had a, the momentum is not as strong as it was last year, this year, you find, you know? Well, well um, one, yeah. I've had most every artist already. I mm -hmm. had about eighty percent of the artists of Trinidad and Tobago. So what they coming to sing? I mean, I had Super Blue by me about six times, and he, six times he sing, he six times he make money. But everybody is not a Super Blue. So oh. we, you know, and the thing with this is, if you're coming, you gotta come with a different repertoire, with a different show. You know, things are the, the shows, and them have to you gotta rethink the shows. You understand? You gotta rethink it. Mm -hmm. You gotta think of what the people want to hear. I might like Robin Foster. He had he two songs. But he can't sing them two songs this month and then next two months and then the following two months. He have to he have to sing some other songs. I think you, I, do, you yeah. know, we had like the clash between you remember you had a clash between Alison and Patrice, I think. Was it you, right? Um, no, 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 no. That, that was um Man, did that you was, sell or somebody. Did you sell? Yeah. That's my those are my competitors. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, <laughs> people like clashes. So if you want to I had idea. I had I had clashes between old and young and it did not work because young people do pay. The young uh, people don't contribute. Only the older um, heads contribute. We had a little technical. Instagram, 
we had a little we had a little techie huh? glitch there. What you were saying you had a clash between whom? Who you had the, the clash I between? I had a clash between old and young. I had um Swappy and Explainer. Oh yes, I, I remember had, that. I saw that. I had um Sha- it was a Sean, no, not Sean Marshall. Five Star Keel and Johnny King, Pretty and and things like that. That pose old versus young. Now I had that, mm-hmm. but um, what I, what I found is that pose and the older people would bring their people, but the younger people mm-hmm. brought mm-hmm. nobody, brought nothing to the table. All right, so um, mm. hmm. all right, so I think we should go on like. Coaching the younger ones, or, or or just leave them up to to find a way in the world. No, but the younger ones, from a money perspective, the younger artists and the younger producers are making more money than both of us, Robin. Well, making I, I, more money than us. Dying hard to do. <laughs> for me, no, dying, no, no, dying no. hard to do for me. No, no, no. I mean, they they have the um, they have the 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 they have the platforms to make money. Meaning, yeah, 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 they're, uh, they're, yeah. The, the, the Spotify's and the Rhapsody's and the Apple Music and whatnot, they making money, and it's big money, right? Remember, there was a time when we, when and Mario might know that they say CDs not selling because CDs easy to pirate, and Shadow say you're, you're recording again because it's not making no money, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a pause in recording. Now, the recordings. Where it is be the younger ones making money and making money for the producers and the writers and the singers. They are making money. And I'm talking about serious money. Wow. Right? From the like from the, the subscriptions from these things. Whereas it might be point zero 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 three cents a play. And if you're on somebody's playlist, you play in every day, whole day, it adds up to money. It adds up to money. I have seen checks. I've seen checks, right? Yeah, let me just right. say that. I've seen checks, checks that I I never make. Mm-hmm. It's making money. Cool. <laughs> well, I, I check scenes. I ain't see, I ain't see. You're seeing checks. checks. <laughs> you checking scenes. All right, right. That's I it. Check I check in scenes. scenes. I ain't see any checks. All right. right. So Mario, you, know. you have anything to well, I, well, to add to the way forward? Yeah, I wanted to just say a little thing. Um, well, first of all, thank Kenny for his his work that he's doing. I know sometimes you know it takes a lot to do this what you're doing and, and push the music forward, and sometimes the reward you don't get the rewards that they're looking for. I mean you get different type of rewards, but you may not get the financial rewards that you're looking for. And also remembering over the years you were the only man to do it, still was to have a DJ meeting. Remember it was probably about 2003 or five or somewhere around there, where we had a meeting. And I mean since then we have never had a DJ meeting. Eh? among DJs in moving <laughs> forward so but we have to I have to thank you for that meeting anyway <laughs> you know what I mean it might seem insignificant but it was the only meeting that DJs really were able that you pull a few DJs together in, in trying to discuss the same thing moving forward you know what I mean and I mean you have been at it for any sense of moving forward from since ever I know you and you, you try to get DJs to move forward too I mean, we did have that meeting. Eh? I don't even remember it. It was in somewhere around the, by the square around there, you know, by the secret arts around there. Um, that was the only thing. So thanks a lot <laughs> for your contribution <laughs> towards DJs too <laughs> and for your contribution in getting the music out there. And I, I know the, the struggle, but I know you have a strong head. So that, that's my only <laughs> final words to say. Right. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank All you so right, much. man. So, Ke- so Kenny boy, um, thanks a lot for coming mm-hmm. and and thing. What we gonna do? Um, you know, we gonna talk to people like you, the older heads, and then we go come down to the um to the younger folks and see what going. And hopefully, we could work something out. You know, we had to do these investigations. You know what I mean? So, Kenny. Yeah, man. Thanks for yeah, talking. Thanks, boy. Yeah, All right. Okay. Yeah, Later. Man. It was Boy. nice. It was fun. Right, All right. right. All love. Stay, stay safe. All right. All right. Cool, easy. man. Take All it right. easy. So, Mario, boy. Yeah. That is the end of um, show number two. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, we going good, right? Um, yeah. So, people, look out again for moving forward. And, um, you know, look out for us on... YouTube or 
Facebook or wherever you get your podcasts. And um, we'll see you again soon. All right.